What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through the 2021 AP Calculus BC free response question number two. So let's get started. Now, this question in general is just very calculator heavy and formula heavy. So looking at part A, we want to find the speed of the particle at time t equals 1.2. So the speed we could just say is equal to, we have the square root of, and it's going to be the velocity in the x at 1.2. So notice here, if the position is x of t, the velocity vector, they gave us a formula here, but that's going to be the same thing as x prime, because if position is x, y, then velocity is going to be x prime, y prime. So we're going to be finding x prime of 1.2, and then we're going to be squaring this quantity, and adding that to, we're going to have y prime of 1.2, and this is also being squared. So we just have to punch this in a calculator. So for all three parts of this question here, we're going to be in parametric mode. So we go to mode and we go from function over one to parametric. And I would type in the original function here. So we have parentheses t minus one, and then we've got e to the t squared. Now we're going to need the calculator for all three parts. So it's helpful to just type this thing in once, just in case you have to use this more than once. So we have sine of, and we've got t to the 1.25. And just so we know what this stuff means, remember, they gave us the x and y component of the particle's velocity when we're talking about the motion of the particle. And the first thing we want to find is the speed of the particle at time t equals 1.2. So if we press second window and we switch the table from auto to ask in the independent variable, now when we go to the table, it's going to be blank. But when we type in t equals 1.2, notice here we get the x velocity and then we get the y velocity. Now, I'm going to type this into the speed formula on the main screen. And at the very, very, very end, I have to round to three decimal places. So I would probably go out to 0.844139 should be enough. And if I look at the Y component, I would have 0.9508477. And I'll feel good because the four would tell me to round down. So we're just going to punch that into the formula. So if we go to the main screen, we got second X squared for our square root. And now the X velocity, we have 0.844. And then we had 139. And we said up to here should be good because we're going out six decimal places. And then if we square that, we're going to add, we have 0 0.950. And we got 8477. And we're squaring this too. Be very careful typing this stuff in because if you make a typo, uh, that's an annoying way to lose a point. And this tells us here that our answer, we're going to round to the nearest thousandths place, is going to be 1.271. Okay, for some reason, College Board, they love it when you round to three decimal places. So that's where we're going to stop. Now, the next part of this question here is to find the acceleration vector of the particle at time t equals 1.2. So for this, what we're going to do is that's the same thing as looking for what is x double prime of 1.2 comma y double prime of 1.2. So once again, this is just all calculator work. So now to find the acceleration at t equals 1.2, we have to find the acceleration in the x and the y. So what we could do is we could press math 8 to pull up the derivative. And we're taking the derivative with respect to time of the x and the y. So if we press vars, this is a shortcut. We could go to the right. We press parametric, that's number 2. And we type in x1. So remember, x1 was the velocity in the x. So if we take the derivative of velocity in the x, that's going to give us the acceleration in the x at t equals 1.2 gives us the value that we're interested in. And now we need to repeat this process for the y. So I just press enter on the line before. So it recopies everything. And if we scroll over, we press vars, we go to the right, go to parametric. And this time we're typing in y1, which is the velocity in the y direction. So the derivative of the velocity in the y is the acceleration in the y. And at t equals 1.2, here's our acceleration, our acceleration in the y. So this is going to be our solution. So if we just record our calculator solution here, we're going to round to three decimal places. The x component acceleration is going to be 6.247. And if we look at the y component, that's going to be 0.405 if we round to the thousands place. So here's our solution to part A. For part B, we just have to know the formula for finding total distance traveled by a particle. And this is a parametric equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for the integral from 0 to 1.2. So our limits of integration is the time interval. And then we have square root of. And remember, we're going to be doing the integral of the speed function. So we're doing this in general. So this is going to be the integral of the velocity of the x squared 
And remember, this is all under a square root. So we have the velocity of the x component squared, plus we have the velocity of the y component squared. And then we just tack on dt at the end here. So once again, this is just showing up knowing our formulas. And we just have to type this in. For part b, we want to find the total distance traveled from t equals 0 to t equals 1.2. So we're going to do the integral of the speed function. So we're typing in the integral. We have the square root of, and we have the velocity in the x, which is, if we go to the parametric, we have x1. That's our velocity in the x, and that's being squared. And then we have plus. We're going to go to vars. We go to the right, parametric, and y1 is option 2. So we just type this in here, and this is our speed equation here. We have the velocity in the x squared plus the velocity in the y squared under the square root. And we're doing the integral of this. And we're, the limits of integration is the time interval from 0 to 1.2. And this gives us our solution to part b. And we're going to round to three decimal places. So this is going to be 1.010. So if we round our calculator solution to the nearest thousands place, that's going to give us 1.010 is going to be the total distance traveled by the particle on this time interval. So for part C, we have to do a few things, but first we're gonna find the coordinates at which the particle is farthest to the left. So one thing you wanna think about here is that, remember, x of t tells you what the particle's position is left or right, and y of t would tell you the vertical position of the particle. So when the particle is furthest to the left, that's gonna represent the minimum value of x of t. So that means we have to find the minimum value of x of t. So the steps to finding the minimum value would be to find x prime of t, which is the x component of the velocity vector. So we're going to set x prime of t, which is t minus 1, times e to the t squared. We're setting this equal to 0, but be mindful here that considering that this function has a component that involves Euler's function e, e to the t squared is always, always, always positive. So we're not going to get a root out of this one, but we will get a root when t minus 1 is equal to 0, which implies t is equal to 1. And then what we would do here is we'd make a sign chart for x prime of t. And notice the interval is t is greater than or equal to 0. So we start this thing at 0, and we look at 1 here. And if I plug in any test value, like let's say 1 half, 1 half minus 1 would be negative 1 half. And then I have negative 1 half times something that's always positive. So on my first interval, x prime is going to be negative. And if I plug in something bigger than 1, like 2, 3, or something greater, that everything on this interval here is going to be positive. So what this tells us, if we think about this very carefully, is that x of 1 is a local minimum of x of t. And since this is the only critical point on this interval, this also happens to be the absolute minimum. Now, they didn't tell us to explain this, so we don't have to write a really long sentence here. But this is going to help us. We could say here that x of 1 is the absolute minimum so this is the absolute minimum value of x of t. Remember, for this part, we don't have to write a because, but this is just setting up the work here for us to close this out. But remember, the goal here wasn't to find the time at which the particle is furthest to the left. What we have to do here is find the coordinates of the point at which the particle is farthest to the left. So this is where we have to make use of the initial conditions here. So notice at time 0, the position of the particle is negative 2, 5. So what this tells us here is that we have to find what is the x and what is the y value at this time t equals 1. So notice this is once again going on here at t equals 0. At t equals 0, we have the position of the particle. So then we're just going to borrow the x component here. So we're going to have the starting point for x is negative 2 plus how much does the particle move? What is the displacement in the x direction of the particle from t equals 0 to t equals 1. Okay, Because once again, we're trying to find the coordinates of the particle at t equals 1. We know what the coordinates are at t equals 0. So we're doing the integral from 0 to 1 to see what's the displacement. And then we're just plugging in here. We have x prime of t. And now for the y, we take the y value at t equals 0, which is 5. That's our starting point, our initial condition. And then we're doing the integral from 0 to 1 of we have y prime of t dt. So the rest of this is calculator work. So for the last part, we need to find the position of the particle at t equals 1. So we're going to do the x and the y separately. So for the x, the initial position was negative 2. 
and then plus, we need to find what is the displacement in the x from t equals 0 to t equals 1. Well, to find displacement, we have to do the integral of the velocity in the x. So we have vars, we're going to the right, and we have parametric, and we have x1. So just to recap what we have here, remember, this is the displacement of the particle in the x direction, but we also have to take into the account take into account here that the position at t equals 0 is negative 2. So we do this e uh, expression here, and this is going to give us, we have our x position at t equals 1. And if we repeat this process for the y component, the things that are going to change here is the y initial position, this point started at negative 2, or the particle started at negative 2, 5. So we're going to start at 5, and we're doing the integral from 0 to 1, and this time around we're going to switch x1 over to y1, because this is going to tell us the displacement of the particle in the y direction from 0 to 1. But once again, don't forget the initial position, because that does change things a lot. So this is going to give us our solution to part C. So we, we can record our answer for x1. We have negative 2 point, and we're rounding to three decimal places. We're going to have 6, 0, 4. And for the y, we're going to have, if we round to three decimal places, we have 5.410. So now if we want to make sure that we're answering the rest of this question here, we could say the point is, first we'll just record, what is the point? The point is, and we have negative 2.604, 5.410. So here's our point, and we'll just circle this as our answer. But now to answer the rest of this question here, we have to explain, so we have to write a sentence here, explain why there is no point at which the particle is farthest to the right for t greater than or equal to zero. Well, the key is that we have to look at this sign chart that we made. So why is it that the particle at no point is farthest to the right for t greater than or equal to zero? And it has everything to do with the fact that if we focus here, we said that when t is greater than one, x prime is positive. And since x prime represents the velocity in the x direction, if you have positive velocity in the x direction, that means your particle is moving to the right. So this means the particle is moving to the right from t equals 1 and on. So from 1 to infinity, the particle just continues to move to the right. So if the particle is always moving to the right, there is no point at which the particle is going to be farthest to the right. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the 2021 BC Calculus free response question number two. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.